Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the spleen. I'm recording it in 2020 just for reference. And we're going to talk about this guy right here, the spleen. It sits right in the peritoneum next to the pancreas, next to the liver, I mean the kidney, sorry. The stomach is nearby as well as the colon. And this is of course called the splenic flexure. flexure. The spleen is about one inch thick. It's about three inches wide and about five inches tall. It weighs about seven ounces and it is located between the ninth through the eleventh ribs. And so you can see we've got this very helpful mnemonic one three five seven nine eleven that gives us some details on it. Now the spleen size is actually very dependent on the age and height of the individual so there are tables for calculating what's a big spleen versus a normal spleen, but this is a good estimate. And we're covering the spleen because it is part of the EM model. Uh, specifically, they only are asking us to look at three things, asplenism, splenomegaly, and vascular insufficiency slash infarction. But we're going to go over a little bit more than that. The spleen itself has several functions, and internally it's split up into a red pulp, and white pulp matching the red blood cells and the white blood cells. The red pulp it has several functions. It makes hemoglobin F in the fetus and in certain cases it can be a site for hematopoiesis in adults as well. Uh, it's a reservoir for platelets. About, one th about a cup full of platelets reside in the spleen should we need them. It filters RBCs, especially ones that are damaged in some way, and it recycles heme. The white pulp basically acts like a giant lymph node with its immune function, and it also stores a whole bunch of white blood cells. So let's take a quick look at how the spleen is organized. This, this, stuff, or this stuff here is what is called the white pulp. And this stuff here, I didn't color it red just to keep the drawing a little bit cleaner. This is the red pulp. It looks white here, but it's actually the red pulp. And we have the splenic artery that branch down into these arterioles. The veins start out as a venous sinus. They drain into a collecting vein, which then leaves through the splenic vein. The white pulp has three different areas here that I drew in three colors, this kind of orange color, this yellow color, and this green. The green goes around the arteriole, and so it's called the periarteriolar lymphatic system, or PALS. Just outside that, you have the marginal zone, and then these green areas are follicles. And of course, the whole thing, the whole spleen is covered by a thick fibrous capsule. So let's take a look at what goes on in the red pulp first. We have our arterioles that branch into capillaries and this spills red blood cells out into this space called the cords of Billeroth. So in this space all the RBCs will spill out including a whole bunch of normal ones but some that have these inclusions within them, some that are tagged with antibodies or opsonized and some that are abnormally shaped. Also in here are a bunch of macrophages that are going to try to eat these RBCs, particularly the ones that have things inside of them or are oddly shaped or are opsonized. So the macrophages will come and phagocytize these RBCs. And it will try to grab up as many of these RBCs as it can. Now the only ones that are going to make it through these little fenestrations in the venous sinus here are the normal RBCs because they're pretty pliable. So these normal ones can fit in and then go off through the clotting, through the collecting vein off to the back to the circulation. Now the abnormally shaped RBCs, particularly the spherocytes, are too big to fit and so they can't get in here and then ultimately fall victim to the macrophages. So this is the filtering function of the spleen. So here are some of the abnormal cells that might get tagged for phagocytosis by the macrophages. Nucleated RBCs, ones that have nuclear remnants, so those are called Howell jolly bodies, and then the precipitated hemoglobin in it, or Heinz bodies. And also RBCs that are 
expressing abnormal surface proteins. So what happens then is the macrophage comes by and takes a bite out of the RBC, leaving a little pit here. And that process is referred to as pitting. And now that RBC has an unstable membrane and it's unable to now retain its biconcave disc shape and then it often will then kind of revert to a spherocyte, which we know is going to be targeted to be eaten. So this is what happens in the red pulp. Now let's take a look at the white pulp. So here's our white pulp, the arteriole, and around the arteriole we got the periarteriole lymphoid sheath or PALS, and right outside there the marginal zone. The PALS area is predominantly filled with T cells, which gets presented an antigen by an antigen presenting cell, in this case a dendritic cell, via the MHC. It can also be presented antigens by macrophages in the marginal zone. This in turn allows the T cell to be activated so it can activate B cells. And then these activated B cells can go on to become one of two different cells. So either a memory B cell which uh, just hangs out for the next time that this antigen comes around as well as plasma cells, which uh, secrete antibodies, which get uh, released into the lymph and some into the bloodstream as well. Additionally, antigens that find their way into the follicle can themselves be phagocytized by B cells, which of course then have the ability to turn to plasma cells and memory B cells and secrete antibodies. The white pulp also serves as a reservoir for WBCs, and there's a whole bunch of them that are stored in here. So should the body need them at some point, they can send them on out. So before we conclude this video, let's talk about uh, testing. Splenic size is best uh, assessed using ultrasound. And remember that the size is based on age and uh, height. And so you may need to consult some table, and I believe there's an app out there that also will allow you to figure out what the size is given those parameters. So if you want to measure size, ultrasound's your best bet. If you're looking for lesions, like a mass or an abscess or an infarct, then you're better off going with CT or MRI in order to better characterize these. These two modalities have not really been validated for looking at the size, but they're great for looking at lesions. And one of the main reasons that I went through all that splenic function telling you why, how all the things that it does is because of this, the peripheral smear. When you get this back, here, you know, if you see some of those things that the spleen should have taken care of, then that is an, a hint that there might be some splenic disease going on. So if you see Heinz bodies or Howell Jolly bodies or nucleated RBCs or spherocytes, these are things that the spleen should have taken care of but hasn't. And so that might be an indication that something is wrong with the spleen. Uh, same thing if you see an excess number of platelets because remember the spleen will eat up uh, the unnecessary platelets as well as house a whole bunch of them. And same thing with the excess number of WBCs. So this concludes this first video on the spleen, and we just really kind of looked at what it does. In the next video, we'll go over some of the different diseases that you should probably know about. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.